I'll quickly show you guys something up. Alright, I'm going to show you these things here. These are the quarantine buildings. And these are the each rooms. Now see these wires, this is a window. Why do you think they got the wire in the window? It hooks up because they've got a massive roller shell that keeps you in. This electronic door, which will make it lock, turn the air conditioner off or on. There's that much gadgets, these buildings, what was it, 900,000? Or, or 90, yeah, 900,000 each building. And that's a lot to make. Like, you could build a lot of houses for that. You could probably build three houses for that price. It's just ridiculous the amount it's costing. It's going to be all lined in here. I bet they got microphones and a few hidden cameras in there to listen to you as well. The windows are double glazed, so you won't be able to punch out of it. So is it hermetically sealed? It's solid. Each room. This is where you'll be sleeping. Toilet, bathroom, kitchen, TV. They're going to have double beds. There'll be two people per room. And it's a little prison, the size of little Roman buildings. And not, don't these people building them think that they won't be locked up in them too? This is the thing. The Polish thought that when they were building their camps over there, they didn't think they would end up in them. All these buildings is connected a gas pipe that is connected to nothing. Right here. Is it a gas pipe or a water pipe? The rest of the building, the air conditioning, the hot water, electrical and that. What's this for here? It's through the wall. It's through. It's going to come through the ventilating. Okay. We know what happened last time they did that, don't we? Right. Well, they're going to gas this in the I see that. Probably, if you're thinking it, you know they're going to. I'm starting to think they're not for the unvaccinated. They're more for the vaccinated when something happens. Uh, so they say, but no. Show you one that's starting to get sheeted. And the only weak point is underneath this window. You have to smash through the wall and get through the tin. Sure. Not like they're going to hear you, you know, put banging and shit. Fifth of February, twenty twenty-two. First guests arrive at Queensland camp. First guests arrive at Queensland's regional facility. Among your position calls for the state government to reveal how much it costs to vaccinate payers. The war camp site, west of Brisbane, threw out the welcome map for about ten international travellers on Saturday with Deputy Premier Stephen Miles expecting that number to increase in the coming weeks. The facility's 500 bed opening stage was completed last month as the wet weather delayed its construction. The rest of the 100,000 bed centre is expected to be unveiled by April. This is day one and I know staff there are very keen to get their guests, first guests in, Mr Miles said. But we are keen to start small and build upwards from there so that we can test our systems, make sure that everything the staff needs are there to take care of those guests. We expect more people over the coming weeks. Federal Government rejected the World Camp site, saying it failed to meet the key requirements and instead pursued plans for its own 1,000 bed at facility at Pinkabar near Brisbane Airport. The State Government was pushed on with the facility near Toowoomba signing a one-year lease with Wagner Corporation with the option to extend it. Mr Miles has said the deal represents good value but has not revealed details as indicated in a lease agreement and they are generally considered commercial in confidence, he said. The LMP said the government owed it to the taxpayer to reveal the facility costs. Cost. We've been saying all the way through this. Speak to us about the cost, why the secrecy, Shadow Treasurer David Jaganski said on Saturday. But we have denied those requests. We have, what we have seen is a deal of secrecy that is in no shape or form in the best interest of the taxpayer. The taxpayer wants to know how much it costs and what it will be used for. The facility will, was expected to cater for not only the 
travellers who need to, but also people who can't at home. But also people. Mr. Miles said the quarantine centre's roles may change in the future. I have no doubt that there will be ongoing need for accommodation and that they might need a change, he said. Right now we have a number of arrivals. We have people coming from countries who aren't recognised by ours. And we have maritime arrivals. We have agricultural workers who have to, before they can go on farms, there is significant demand. Mm. Two days ago, about the same day, Queensland opened their facilities. South Australia has opened their facilities. Identified as close contacts or unable to isolate safety at home. Port Augusta Regional Accommodation Facility caters for around 100 people, including Aboriginal people unable to return to their homelands and communities in the far north. Over the western coast, it's open to provide the same services in Sejuna or on Wirral Waganji Country Emu Farm. Port Augusta Hub will be instrumental in looking after these guys if they test. The Aboriginal Corporation gave permission to South Australia Hub to develop a hub on their land in Port Augusta to look after in the community. Said the temporary centre mm, was safe and humane place where they could sleep and get treated. These rooms have got air conditioning, they've got showers, toilet blocks, all that kind of stuff. Self A Health, with the help of the community, has gone ahead and are going to be doing culturally appropriate food and delivery. Facility be staffed with health and security personnel, and those in care had access to 24 7 support. A representative from said they were not aware of the facility until a few days ago uh, before it opened, despite raising concerns with SA Help that they need to be appropriate when they encountered their first positive case in. They said they were disappointed. They were not consulted despite being primary health provider for the Aboriginal community. At the beginning of the year, Port Augusta football over was used as a temporary for rough sleepers but was closed soon after. Labor spokesman for Aboriginal Affairs, KM Maya said the result, many Aboriginal people expressed difficulty accessing clearing temperament, treatment and shelter and consequently resorted to taking up shelter in abandoned sheds. That was absolutely foreseeable. The government would have known that was in place in Port Augusta, that there was an influx of Aboriginal people during the summer and even without that there has even been a proper plan to open up a camp. And Pipe Hotel was used as a temporary facility. People yet to complete their were moved to the new facility across the road. Department said people would be able to access transport to Adelaide if they preferred to, to go there. This is Howard Springs in the Northern Territory. It's a so called old mining site, you know, oil, gas, or mining. They're the fly-in, fly-out workers used to camp there. Pretty big. The site that the federal government are building for Queensland is a PFAS contaminated site, as well as other toxic chemicals from World War II. Um, in the 1940s, the Australian Army's 29.5 hectare Damascus barracks were developed by the US in the Second World War for military waste disposal. And it's their location on the Brisbane River, a handy place to dump toxic waste. Barracks were taken over by the South Queensland Joint Legislations Unit for Storage and Supply. They contain unexploded ordinances and chemicals from herbicides, the PFAS. Um, um, and yet this is where he wants to make people go. Um, this is the current immigration here. I'll add the video I've made about it in shortly. This is the Wagner one out at Toowoomba. It's currently just opened. We also need it for the 
Victoria's. So they've got Christmas Island um, Immigration Detention Centre, Phosphorus Hill and um, Northern Territory and Todd Facility, Damascus Barracks and also World Camp. Victoria have Mickleham, Western Australia have Bullsbrock. There'll be more. There's been a uh, new breathalyzer sort of test that's been developed. So how does it work? What does it work off? What's the algorithm? So, yeah. Mm, sure. Sure, okay. But wouldn't you blowing into that contaminate the, the machine with the results? Like, I'm not a doctor, I'm just asking a question. Wouldn't that, like, other people continuously breathing in it contaminate results? in the code. Sort of trying to merge us with AI, aren't they? Iron and clay don't mix. Wow. Wow. Sure. Okay. So, what's written on that? I can't quite see it. Exam systems or exam analysis. Six hundred and fifty thousand. Wow, how far is that going to go? Let me guess. I bet you it's already been made, and this bloke is just the lackey that's going to bring it all out to the public. I bet you that's what it is. So what's with that chip there in it? Like, how is this system supposed to work? Can someone with any of this sort of knowledge help me out? So could that chip be programmed to test positive? You know, or after so many cycles go positive? So when is the Australian election? Hmm. I reckon after the election, all oh shit is about to break loose.